Good day, everybody. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. We're going to take a look. Is this dangerous weather pattern, this big severe weather event type stuff across the south, the mid-Atlantic, the east coast, is this going to continue? We're going to break it all down for you. We'll show you in through the weekend into next week. And are we finally going to see a nice weekend in the northeast? Are we going to continue with this wintry snap and then warm up? Once again, the middle of next week. Well, let's get all into the details, and I'll show you the medium range models as well. And we'll see what the rest of April has to hold as well. Let's get into it. Smash the like button, question or comment down below. I'd love to read your questions or comments. Timestamps down below. If you wish to skip ahead, let's smash into it. All right, so I'll take a look. Here we have the setup here that's going to take us through April 10th through April 15th. This is where things are going to really going to start to crank here across the plain states and into pretty much the rest of the east as the week wears on that low upper level low that brings wintry conditions in the northeast retreats and look what ensues behind it for monday tuesday and wednesday here we have this system ejecting out of colorado it is going to bring down some very unseasonably air, cold air as this thing strengthens. It's debatable how strong this gets, but the GFS brings it down to 970 millibars. The Euro right around 980 millibars. This is going to be a monster storm, and we could have tornadoes in this zone here uh, Monday, later Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday, and that spreads east throughout the week. So we could be dealing with blizzards. And tornadoes. Let's take a look at all the particulars. All right, starting off with the national view here, let's take a look at the Euro, high resolution Euro. So into the northeast, yep, we're dealing with that low pressure system. I told you about that heavy rain and that quick micro update I had earlier this evening. But take a look at all of this heavy rain uh, Thursday evening into early Friday morning. It will continue to pivot into parts of central New England. This is right around sunrise tomorrow, so we'll have some mixed precipitation into northern New England, the Adirondacks, northern white and green mountains here, but heavy rain moving into western Maine here. Take a look as we get this low pressure, this upper level low. This is the big player that held back here in the upper Midwest. We'll have those rain and snow shower mixtures, and we'll even get some rain and snow showers here in the higher elevations of the Appalachians here into your Friday into Saturday morning. Take a look at this. As the daytime heating takes off, the sun is strong this time of year. Take a look at that. We're going to have uh, showers and maybe even some bed of thunder showers, even as cold as it'll be, and some rain and grapple. A lot of grapple that will be mixed in here, especially downwinds of uh, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario here, the Great Lakes. So you get that moisture and that instability. Uh, throughout Saturday afternoon and look at that another low pressure pinwheeling around so we get this big upper level low this trough in the east high pressure starting to kick in here into the deep south now watch this high pressure finally yep the weekend's over so it's time to get nice here into the east that's how, the, how things work especially the northeast but look at this Monday afternoon and evening we're going to start having explosive thunderstorm development here in eastern Texas parts of Oklahoma Louisiana and Arkansas here so this low pressure ejecting out of the Colorado area watch out for a big blizzard here starting to develop on the back side of this heading on into Tuesday right around sunrise yep big old explosive showers and thunderstorms will probably have a dry line boundary moving into this region and setting us up for some major explosive thunderstorms this is going to be an outbreak take a look what's happening here back west yep big explosive blizzard Developing here in Colorado and parts of western Nebraska and Wyoming. Look how that blossoms. So we will have some showers and thunderstorms developing out ahead of this. Another complex further east with this uh, trough that's developing out ahead of this main low pressure system. And take a look at this snow here on the backside. That is a lot of snow as this wraps up. Look what's on the southern end of this. You know when you have a low pressure this strong here to the north winding up over the plains, you're going to drag some Gulf moisture and instability and dynamics will definitely be quite alive here across the deep south. So look how 984 millibars look at. You could be having all-out blizzard conditions across parts of the northern upper Midwest here, Minnesota, eastern Dakotas, right around western Iowa here. Look how that pulls up here. It starts to occlude a bit. So we're dragging some showers and thunderstorms. This is late next Thursday, right around the 14th, heading on into the 15th here. So we could have, could have some strong storms here in the northeast for your early Friday morning. This is good Friday morning here. And look at this explosive development here over the western Gulf and central Gulf. Could have some big-time thunderstorms here across the north central Gulf as well. 
All right, I just wanted to briefly show you this here. 12 a.m. Friday morning. This is uh, heading on Thursday night, early Friday morning. We're still socked in with the rain here. And 1 a.m., we start to get even more moisture moving into the eastern Poconos and Catskills, northern New Jersey here. Look at this. This is in excess of an, half an inch an hour. Some areas three quarters of an inch an hour. So this will start to pivot as low pressure starts to here start to take hold east of New York City by 2 a.m. at this point. Moisture pluming up the so, uh, Hudson River Valley here up from New York City, Poughkeepsie up to Cobleskill here. And we will have some heavy precipitation up here in the Adirondacks too. Maybe some wet snow in these higher elevations. But look at this moisture. This is going to be quite a conveyor belt here moving into the capital district of upstate New York. And look how that pivots here into New England. Actually, let's, uh, let's zoom out here a bit into the northeast. If we put this into motion, take a look at this. There's the low pressure forming here off the New Jersey coast, and look how that takes effect. It really focuses this moisture up this narrow corridor here in the upstate New York. As we get into, this is just before sunrise, so we start to pull that heavier precipitation, heavy rain through Boston by this point. So by the time you wake up for your cup of coffee, you're pretty well dried out here across much of this part of the Northeast. But we're pulling this system up here into parts of Maine. Uh, New Hampshire and into Vermont and accumulating snows up here into Quebec. Take a look at that. We continue to pull this towards noon into eastern Maine and we start to get some instability later in the day here. We get some lake effect showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder and some grapple here mixed in with some of these as we get some of those colder uh, cloud tops here mixing in with some of those higher winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Take a look at this into Saturday morning after sunrise. Look at that. We've got scattered rain and snow showers about New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio here, West Virginia, and even some uh, moisture up here with another trough here into northern New England. So rain and snow shower mixture. Yeah, we're dealing with a touch of winter again this weekend. What's new? All right, so what's leading into this dangerous weather pattern, this massive, explosive, severe weather outbreaks, these stalling systems along the East Coast, leading to potential flooding and more severe weather, and upper-level low stalling across the Great Lakes, giving the Northeast another these wintry weekends that are horrible, and, you know, these really warm conditions in the middle of the week when you're stuck at work and school. So what's leading to this? Well, look at the NAO index. It's been really below zero at this point for about three weeks. Uh, Mid-March, you know, it's been, it, look at it, it was all positive here when you were in the wintertime. So that's led to less snowfall. And now that it's time for springtime, yeah, it goes negative. That's usually the, how things work, unfortunately. But we will stay negative through the rest of April here. So that's going to lead to stormier than average conditions here. Let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at the GFS. We'll head on into Monday here. So we have some severe weather developing here. It'll start to get cranking later Monday afternoon and evening and overnight Monday into Tuesday. Watch this as we head into tu later Tuesday into Wednesday. This is where we really start to get explosive development here across Texas. And yeah, it's kind of low resolution because we're this far out and it's the GFS, but you get the picture. There's going to be some big time thunderstorms in this neck of the woods here. All right, let's get an idea of the spin in the atmosphere. We'll go right to Monday here. Take a look at the Southern Plains. This is where the greatest vorticity, this upper level spin in the atmosphere to get some of these explosive developments here of thunderstorms. Here it is Tuesday. Take a look at some of these vorticity maxes here in the south. Another one over here in uh, Arkansas. So yeah, you will see thunderstorms up here in the Central Plains, but they're not as close to some of these vort maxes here that we do have here in the Southern Plains. So watch out for this as this system really kicks across here. Take a look at that. Early Thursday morning, this continues across the south as well. All right, let's take a look at that four-letter word, you know, the snow word. Yeah, let's take a look. So we bring this into motion. This is pretty far out, but it's really interesting to see. Take a look what's blossoming here on the backside of that major low pressure. That is a blizzard. Look at these snow totals, 14, 18 inches, Denver 20 inches, 32, 39 inches here into the uh, central Rockies. And look at this, all the way up into parts of Minnesota, 22 inches. This is, yeah, this could get really, 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 really interesting. So, you know, I know this time of year you want it to be springtime, but, you know, some of you might 
might actually want this. So let's, I don't know. This is going to be interesting. And then here over the weekend here in parts of the Appalachians, we could see a couple inches here in northern New England as well. And then on the other side of the border there in Quebec, this is this weekend. So you could see accumulating snows, advisory and warning criteria. Snows, really interesting here. All right, so let's take a look at the medium term. This is going to get us through April into early May. This is kind of what we want to see what's uh, coming up in the future. And I am going to eventually add, you know, the all of this uh, CFS V2 as well as MJO index uh, to my forecast as well. So let's get into this. Let's just dive into it. So uh, we get into North American weather. Look at here heading on into the weekend. That's that massive trough here kicking across uh, the eastern part of the country. And that's bringing us that wintry weekend. But look at we get a little ridge come Monday and Tuesday. So it kind of teases us. But look at that. It's interesting how the pattern... Pretty much holds a trough there across the northeast, ridging in the center of the country where you're going to get that massive, let's back that up there. There's that massive trough there across the northern plains next week that brings way to that massive uh, storm that we're going to see. And then look at that. Oh, that's interesting. Let's back that up a second. So you get a ridge. Let's take a look at Easter weekend there. So yeah. That's just in time for Easter weekend there in the Northeast. So, yeah, we're continuing with this horrible pattern of wintry type conditions on the weekends and then it warms up again. So this is uh, pretty frustrating. Wednesday, we're kind of breaking the trend because here in the middle of the week, we're bringing in this major trough here, kicking in across the lakes in the Northeast and then eventually here the South as well. So things could be turning much colder here across the eastern part of the country for April 25th. Look at that. Much of the country seeing, you know, uh, pretty much troughiness at this point. So, yeah, we kick this through May 1st. Look at this. And things start, yeah, well, for most of the continent except the east here. But look at that. We finally kick it in. It looks a little bit better overall. And Robert Stone from Morrisville, Tennessee on Yep. April 6th here. Take a look at that. Heavy, Heavy rain. rain moving across the area here. And that was just north of where all the severe weather was occurring in Georgia there. So nice captures there. Robert, and all your travels and through all of that heavy rain. Yep. So here we go. Friday across the northeast, we'll have that low pressure continuing to kick in here across New England. So early morning hours, we'll have some heavy rain. That will move moderate to heavy rain into parts of southern part of Maine with some mixed precipitation, especially the higher elevations in northern New England here. But we'll have some scattered showers throughout the day. Temperatures will be on the fall. Look at that. 40s dropping down into the 40s. Western New York, western Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio. It's still holding on to 57 in Albany and Binghamton, 58 in Scranton, and still holding on to the 60s here along the coastline. But watch as we kick into the weekend here. These upper level lows start to move across the eastern Great Lakes. This is where you start to see some mixing here into the higher elevations of northwest Pennsylvania, western New York, and northern upstate New York here. Start to see temperatures falling through the 40s here. So 49 in Binghamton, that's about the best we could do. 52 in Harrisburg, 59 in New York City Central Park. And we will kind of scrap together a somewhat okay day at places like Atlantic City, Washington, D.C. It'll be mostly dry for the most part. But we still have those threats, showers. Many areas could be getting, you know, showers continuing here across parts of the northeast continuing. So looking at a wetter weekend here and colder as well. Very similar to last weekend, unfortunately. And then Sunday, we kick this in here to Sunday, mixed precipitation, so any scattered showers will change to a mix of rain and snow. And temperatures only warming up into the mid-40s here for the most part. Staying dry in southeastern Pennsylvania here, New Jersey, uh, but you will be dealing with this uh, problem. Lake-enhanced precipitation, downwind of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, and continuing here into New England with that upper level low. And finally, yeah. You're right. The weekend is over. You know what that's time for? It's time for nice weather. Yep, you go back to work and school and look what kicks in high pressure and the return flow around it. Nice 60 degree temperatures kicking in right around Binghamton, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Harrisburg, double sixes as well as Pittsburgh. Gotta love it, huh? 
All right, taking a look at the southeast here for your Friday, we finally have some clearing going on. Look at this. Temperatures will be cooler, and you will have some instability in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Maybe some snowflakes up here in the higher elevations, some wet snow, and then rain showers kicking in here across eastern Tennessee. But for the most part, high pressure will be kicking in here into Texas. You will have a stray shower or thunderstorm at this tail end of the front here around Miami through the Florida Keys. But as we get through the weekend here, yeah, there'll be a little bit cooler temperatures settling down here into Florida as well. Look at that, 74 in Tampa, 68 Panama City, 58 in Raleigh, 53 in Roanoke, maybe some wet snow here in some of the higher elevations. But we start to see this explosive warm weather developing, 84 in Dallas, 86 in Houston. And then Sunday, that warm front really pushing in to eastern Texas. We may have a stray shower or thunderstorm. Thankfully, it will not be severe. The dynamics aren't there just yet, but just hold on to your hat there because I pressures kicking in here to the east moving to the east so we have a return flow we're finally going to start to warm it up towards 80 here in pa uh, Tam Tampa and Miami for both there and we'll start to warm it up here into the Carolinas as well and then for your Monday there it is severe weather kicking in here you're going to have that dry line kicking in across western Texas instability from the Gulf of Mexico and this low pressure moving out of Colorado. This is going to spell major problems here. The dynamics are perfect for the potential of a tornado outbreak across the Dallas, Texas area. I think it will be enhanced, but it could potentially, as we draw near, would not be surprised if this goes into the moderate category. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers, being to Scranton's upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York and in northeast Pennsylvania, Friday through Tuesday. Take a look at this. Yeah, Friday we start off okay. It's, you know, 57 degrees, not too bad, some scattered showers, but look at this. Saturday we kick that upper level low in. Maybe some wet snowflakes above 1,200 feet, not really any accumulation, but this will be a wet day. About a quarter inch expected into your Sunday. Take a look at that rain and snow showers likely. Again, 46 degrees, that's about as... All we can do for you. That's pretty cold. We finally have just in time for the weekend to end Monday and Tuesday. The low pressure moves away. High pressure kicks in. And look at that. Look at that big warming trend. 60 by Monday after a cold start of 29. And 72 degrees. Beautiful skies by Tuesday. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. Don't forget to give my Facebook page some love. It's Meteor. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern, if you want to follow me for hurricane season. Also, Meteor.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. Find me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget to question or comment down below. Smash the like button. Share the video. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Hit that bell button.